Hey guys, on today's show, I want to give you a, a quick update on what has happened to me. If you haven't been in the loop, I got into a really bad uh, car accident recently, so I wanted to cover that quickly, and I want to discuss a couple ham radio-related topics, just some quick stuff here, uh, and that's going to be right here, right now, on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, guys, where we try to get you to study for and pass your exams and get you on the air as a licensed ham radio technician as quickly as possible so you can enjoy this hobby as much as we do. Uh, my name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL, and I run the Ham Radio for Non-Techies channel here, in case you did not know if you're new. And by the way, if you are new here, consider subscribing down below. It's free. Just click on the subscribe button, click on the little bell, and be notified when I do new videos. Um... So, quick update here. I don't want to dwell on this. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do this video quickly because I'm, I have my neck brace off right now, and it's really hard for me to hold everything up right now. I'm just still still recovering. Um, but I was in a, uh, a pretty bad car accident uh, a couple weeks ago on the 22nd of March. I was heading down to go pick up my wife, and uh, I was heading down the street, and I had the right of way, and a car pulled left in front of me, and T-boned my forerunner and flipped my truck over and spun it around, uh, which caused a lot of a lot of damage. I mean, the truck is totaled now. Uh, all the antennas and all the off-road lights and everything I had on there, all the attachments on the outside of the truck were all just blown all over creation. And on the inside of the truck, it was even more mayhem because I had a whole bunch of loose stuff, you know, antennas and 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 uh, uh, antenna masts, uh, speaker boxes, all kinds of stuff. that was all flying around inside the car. Almost every window in the car got broken. Uh, I ended up getting hit in the head with something. I think it was my one of my speaker boxes. Put a nice two and a half inch gash in the back of my skull here. So uh, I ended up having to go to the hospital, and uh, uh, don't really care for hospitals, much less doctors for that matter. I don't. I, I try to avoid it like the plague. But I had to go because this was pretty severe, and uh, I was a little out of it. And they come to find out that I had a fractured T1 vertebrae in my neck. And that required surgery to repair, which I was really against. But they had, you know, I'd either that or you know, take a chance on it not 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 going back together right. So they ended up using uh, eight screws and two metal rods to fuse the upper and lower vertebrae above and below the T1, and fusing those three vertebrae together, which is why I'm kind of all stiff neck now. Uh, I'm still recovering from all this. Um, I got home from the hospital about a week and a half ago, and every day that passes. I get a little bit stronger. I get a little bit more progress. It's still going to be a long road to recovery. And uh, Jason uh, from uh, Ham Radio 2.0, if in case you haven't heard or didn't know, uh, he set up a GoFundMe account to help me out with some stuff. Just, there's definitely going to be some big expenses. This has really put a damper on me running my other companies as well as running my YouTube channel. Um, we were a one-car family here, so I was pretty much taking my wife to and from work every day. That's now ended until I can get another vehicle. And um, so she's taking Uber to the tune of 35 bucks a day, which sucks. But, you know, what are, what are you going to do? Um, so enough of that. That's that's there. I'll put that. If you want to go ch check out the GoFundMe, it's, I'll put a link down below. You can check it out. And, you know, any, any help's appreciated. But let's get on to some ham radio stuff. Enough of the doom and gloom. Um, so the first topic I wanted to talk about, these are more like, I don't know if I, I can't, they're not, they're not, they're kind of like, uh, it's, it, it, there's protocol when you're on the radio and there's certain things you do and don't do and certain things are he's more like, more like pet peeves than, you know, you can't be doing this. Uh, so the, I only have two things here and I'm going to probably end the show, but the first one is I hear is more on the, on the repeaters than I do, um, on HF because usually by the time you get your general or you're working on your, you know, working on HF, you've had a little more experience in ham radio, you know more of the do's and don'ts and kind of stuff like that. But I know my local repeater, I hear this from new hams all the time, or sometimes, and when they're talking and they end the, they end their sentence, they'll be like, over? Yeah, 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 I, I got you. I, yeah, I heard you said that. That's really cool. Yeah, over. Okay. This is not 1977. This isn't Smoking the Bandit. You're not Burt Reynolds. We don't need, and we're not on CB. So saying over is not really necessary in ham radio. 
when you're talking to somebody and you, and you let off the key, they hear the little, psh, you know, from the repeater or from just, you know, from the radio uh, being unkeyed. And that is indication for the other, par the other party you're speaking to to respond or reply or whatever they're going to be doing in your conversation. So it's kind of irrelevant and unnecessary to say over at the end of each thing. That's more of a CB thing. And honestly, since I'm not on CB, I don't even know if they even say that on CB anymore. That might have been a 1970s CB protocol. But <laughs> either way, it's not necessary to say over, over and out and things like that. We have other we have other lingo that we use in ham radio for for things like that. But just know when you're talking to somebody, you talk. Just talk, and when you're done, unclick. They'll hear that. That's their indication to key up and respond to you and continue the conversation. Uh, the second thing, which is more like a pet peeve for me, but it's still, you know, it's it's it doesn't follow. It, there's protocol, all right? That, like I said before, there's protocols in ham radio. And uh, this one is about uh, ID. So if you, are, if you remember back when you took your technician test, uh, part of the FCC's requirements for us as ham radio operators, licensed ham radio operators, is that every 10 minutes we give an ID for our, we ID ourselves on the air. And you know, we try to keep that as we self police and do that as best we can. So the problem is, I keep hearing people saying stuff like, and I'll use my call sign as an example, they'll be talking and talking and talking, and they'll say, KI5 MPL for ID. Okay. Your call sign is your ID. You don't have to say for ID. It's irrelevant, not necessary. Hey, yeah, that's really great. That's really awesome. I appreciate what you're doing. KI5 MPL. That's it. You've ID'd yourself. You've met the requirement that the FCC has asked of us as licensed ham operators. So saying your call sign for ID, it just doesn't make much sense. It's not a big deal. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. It's just one of those little things that I hear. And I'm like, why would people keep doing this? Doesn't anybody read? I mean, it's, it's not necessary. So that's it, guys. Um, I'm going to have to get out of this chair here in a second, get my neck brace back on. Um, I just wanted to quickly run over those two things. These were going to be YouTube shorts because I think they're more appropriate to be YouTube shorts. But right now, I've got to get some videos out there, get some content made so I don't become irrelevant as a, ch as a channel on YouTube. And I don't really want my fans to forget about me, so <laughs> I wanted to make something to, uh, uh, you know, at least get back in the game here a little bit as much as I can. Um, I appreciate you guys watching out. For those of you that have already donated to my GoFundMe, I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, you're donating, you're helping out somebody you've never met in person. You won't see me on a screen, and that really means a lot to me. Um, you know, I, I plan on beating this. I'm not going to let this thing get me down. Every day that I rest, every day that I heal a little bit more, I get stronger, and I'm going to get past this. It's just going to take a little while. So if you just bear with me, I will try to put out videos as much as I can. I've been researching new videos, learning new stuff, and what I might end up doing is maybe doing more videos where I'm not exactly a talking head in front of the camera. Maybe do some like build videos where I can build some stuff and just trying to show you guys some cool things. You know, this little, little tiny non-stressing uh, uh, activities for me at the moment. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm to show my video to more people that are interested in ham radio. If you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing down below. Just click the subscribe button, click on the little bell, and you'll be notified when I do new videos. Until then, guys, I really appreciate everything. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Have a great day. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And until then, this is Ham Radio for non-techies, and we are clear.